Lesson 1. Young enough to change the world. Teens in action. Many young people are making the world a better place. For example, Carter and Olivia Reese have become leaders in saving animals. Although they are only teenagers, they have actually made a difference in the world. How were they able to do that? Let's hear from Carter. When I was five, my little sister Olivia and I each adopted a cheetah. Did we raise cheetahs at home? No, we donated to a charity that protects wild cheetahs in South Africa. Our parents told us that if we did not protect them, we might not be able to see cheetahs in the near future. We soon became interested in helping other endangered animals. A few years later, with help from our parents, we created a non-profit organization to protect them. We wanted the next generation to be able to see these animals, so we named our organization One More Generation. We also studied endangered animals and educated our friends about them. Then one day, a terrible oil spill occurred in the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of sea animals were completely covered with oil, and they were dying. We had to do something. We started collecting animal rescue supplies such as pet carrying cages and rubber gloves from everyone in our neighborhood. Four months later, our family drove to the Gulf of Mexico to deliver what we collected and help to save the animals. While we were working there, we learned something very useful. When we put mayonnaise into a turtle's throat, the turtle threw up. That way, we were able to get oil out of the turtles. I never knew mayonnaise could be used to save animals. On our last day, we met a marine life specialist. She told us that plastic waste is more dangerous to sea animals than oil spills are. A lot of sea animals and seabirds die from eating plastic waste. After we came home, we created an educational project about how to reduce plastic waste. In addition to this, our organization continues to do various projects to save animals. Although we started small, we are making a big difference. What you do today can change the world, so take that first step. Lesson 2. Timeless Tales of Gods and Heroes Treasures for Three Gods Important Norse Gods Odin, who is the highest god, gave up his eye for wisdom. Thor is Odin's son and the strongest god of all. Frey, who is the god of the harvest, controls the weather. Loki is a god who plays tricks on others. Thor woke and knew immediately something was wrong. His wife's beautiful golden hair was gone. He knew only Loki could do such a terrible thing. Thor soon found Loki, who was drinking at home. You'd better undo what you did or you'll be sorry, Thor said angrily to Loki. Loki was scared. He promised that he would get golden hair for Thor's wife. Loki knew only the sons of Ivaldi could make fine golden hair. He went to them and said, I heard Brook and his brother are the finest smiths. Is that true? No, it is we who are the finest smiths, the sons of Ivaldi replied. They're making three treasures for Odin, Thor, and Frey, said Loki. Do you think you can make treasures better than theirs? Of course we can, they answered. Okay, then you should also make three treasures for them, said Loki. The gods will decide on the best treasure. Loki also told them that one of the treasures had to be golden hair. They went to work immediately. Loki then went to see Brook and his brother. Ivaldi's sons are making three treasures for Odin, Thor, and Frey, said Loki. I bet that you can never make treasures as fine as theirs. Brook became angry and accepted the challenge. 
he and his brother produced three treasures of their own. Loki went to see the three gods with all the treasures. Brok came along. Loki showed them the treasures from Ivaldi's sons. The first treasure was for Odin, who had only one eye. It was a spear that never missed its target. The second treasure was a big ship that could turn into a piece of cloth. It was for Frey. The third treasure was for Thor. Loki showed Thor the flowing golden hair for his wife. Thor put the hair on his wife's head, and it took root and became real hair. It was now Brok's turn to show the gods his gifts. He gave Odin a gold arm ring that produced eight more gold rings every ninth night. Brok then gave Frey a pig. It could pull his carriage faster than any horse. My third treasure is for you, Thor, said Brok. This is the hammer Mjolnir, which you'll love. If you throw it, it'll always come back to you. Moreover, nothing can ever break it. It was an easy decision to choose the greatest treasure. It was Mjolnir that the three gods liked most. They thought the hammer would protect the gods from their enemies. Broke and his brother, said Odin, are the better smiths. Broke proved that Loki was wrong, and the three gods now had precious treasures. Lesson 3. Plant that feed us. Hidden Stories About Plants Popeye and the Great Spinach Popeye is a world-famous cartoon character. He gets his superpower by eating spinach. When Popeye became popular in the 1930s in the United States, a lot of children began to eat spinach. Crystal City in Texas which is called the spinach capital of the world, even built a statue of Popeye. Although eating spinach will not give us superpowers, spinach does have a lot of nutrients. It is actually considered one of the 10 healthiest foods on the planet. Spinach can be used in a surprising way. When it absorbs water, spinach, also absorbs many other things from the soil. Some scientists have used this characteristic of spinach to find bombs hidden in the ground. They make special spinach plants with sensors on their leaves. When these plants soak up traces from bombs, the sensors light up. Carrots in World War II. In 1940, the Royal Air Force defeated German fighters during World War II by using a radar system. The British government wanted to keep this technology a secret, so it published an article in the newspaper. It said that British pilots improved their night vision because they ate a lot of carrots. Everybody believed the story and began to eat a lot more carrots than before. Can we really improve night vision by eating lots of carrots? Not really, but carrots contain a lot of vitamin A, which does keep our eyes healthy. In the future, carrots may actually be used in wars. Scottish researchers have discovered a way to turn carrots into a very strong and light material. It can even be used to make battleships. This new material has already been used to make snowboards and bicycles. Tomatoes, the scariest vegetables. We all know that tomatoes are good for our health. Up until the 1800s, however, most Americans thought that tomatoes were poisonous. 
In 1820, a man named Robert Johnson wanted to prove that tomatoes were safe to eat. So, he ate a basket of tomatoes in front of many people watching him. They all expected him to die, but nothing happened to him. Ever since then, Americans have enjoyed eating tomatoes. We are no longer afraid of tomatoes, but some insects are still scared of them. If you want to keep insects away from your room, place a bowl of crushed tomatoes in a corner of your room. Insects will not come near the tomatoes. Lesson 4. This is Korea. Henyo, female divers of Korea. For the past several years, the underwater photographer, Zin Kim, has promoted the culture of Jeju Henyo worldwide. Henyo are Korean female divers who harvest seafood without any breathing devices. Their culture made UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage List in 2016. At her studio last week, Zin Kim was interviewed about her experience of taking pictures of Hanyo. How did you become interested in taking photos of Hanyo? One day, I happened to take pictures of a Hanyo. I was surprised to find that she was enjoying her job. Until then, I had only seen black and white photos of Hanyo who looked very tired. However, she kept laughing, even after she had been in the water for over five hours. I realized then that I should take pictures of Henya. You take beautiful pictures of them, but isn't it difficult to take pictures of Henya? At first, they didn't understand why I wanted to take their pictures. They didn't think they looked pretty in their wetsuits. I said to them, you're very special. I want to show your culture to the world. They opened up to me then. Of course, I also promised them that I would make them look beautiful in my pictures. Could you tell us more about Henyo? What's so special about them? I can tell you three things. First, Henyo are a symbol of strong women. Jejudo, which is a volcanic island, is not suitable for farming. So many Henyo have become the breadwinners for their families. Second, Henyo form their own communities and help each other. For example, more experienced Henyo train less experienced Henyo. Third, because they stay in the water without any breathing devices, Henyo can't catch a lot of seafood. This is good for the underwater environment. Catching too much marine life at one time in one place can destroy the ocean. Lastly, please tell us what you're planning to do in the future. I once attended an overseas exhibition with a couple of Henyo to give a talk about their lives. When I finished my talk, one of the Henyo held my hand tightly. She said to me, thank you so much. I've never known in my whole life that I was such a special person. She was crying with happiness. Everyone in the audience was deeply moved. I can never forget that moment, so I'll continue to take pictures of Henyo. I want to tell more beautiful stories about them to many more people in the world. Lesson 5. A Journey Into Your Mind Psychology Answers Your Questions Do you think you have a unique problem?
chances are that many other people have the same problem. Psychology is the study of the human mind and behavior, so it can help you find a solution to your problem. How do I become less nervous? It was five minutes before Jisoo's big presentation in front of the whole class. Feeling nervous, Jisoo was carefully studying her notes in her chair. Then her teacher came over and told her to stand tall like Wonder Woman. After standing tall for a few minutes, Jisoo did not feel nervous anymore. In fact, she was confident that she would make a great presentation. According to Amy Cuddy, a famous psychologist, we can become more confident just by standing tall for two minutes before stressful events. Our bodies change our minds, and our minds can change our behavior. Do you want to feel confident? Stand with your feet apart and place your hands on your hips. You will not only feel sure about yourself, but also look confident to other people. Who can help me feel better? When he graduates from high school next year, Teho wants to become a professional farmer. However, he has never told anyone about it. He is worried that his parents or his friends will not understand. Wanting to clear his mind, Teho decided to take a day trip on a train by himself. On the train, he told a complete stranger sitting beside him about his problem. He had no idea why he did it. However, he felt much better when he got off the train. Strangely enough, we often tell strangers about our problems, just like Teho. That is because we do not have to worry about being judged or seeing them again. If you have a problem that you cannot share with your family or friends, try talking to a stranger. You will feel much better. How do I turn a rival into a friend? Benjamin Franklin once had a political rival who did not like him at all. Franklin wanted to become friends with him, so he came up with a plan. His rival had a rare book. Franklin asked his rival to lend him the book for a few days. When Franklin returned the book, he thanked him deeply. Since that day, his rival became not only a political supporter, but also a good friend. Franklin famously said, Enemies who do you one favor will want to do more. If you want to turn a rival into a friend, don't do your rival a favor. Instead, ask your rival to do you a favor. Lesson 6. Find your passion. Da Vinci the Cook. Leonardo da Vinci is known as one of the greatest painters of all time. He was also a great inventor, scientist, and musician. Very few people, however, know that da Vinci was also a creative cook. In 1473, 20-year-old da Vinci worked as a cook at a restaurant in Florence, Italy. When he took charge of the kitchen, da Vinci changed the menu completely. He made simple but artistic dishes like fish with a few carrot slices. Some dishes were even decorated with flowers. 
Customers, however, were unhappy because they were used to dishes with big servings of meat. As a result, Da Vinci lost his job. A few years later, Da Vinci opened a restaurant with his friend Sandro Botticelli. He wanted to create a place where people could try his innovative food. They put up a beautifully painted sign and made a uniquely written menu. Da Vinci believed that people would soon appreciate his creative cooking. Unfortunately, that never happened. In the early 1480s, Da Vinci began to work for Ludovica Sforza in Milan. He was given many different roles, such as a musician, a painter, and an engineer. He was also put in charge of the kitchen. He was happy to be given another chance to pursue his passion for cooking. Da Vinci did not stop at cooking creative dishes. He wanted to cook much more quickly and easily. Thus, he invented new machines for his kitchen. He created machines that could crush vegetables and pull spaghetti. He even made a device that could scare frogs away from the water tank. Surely, they were all very innovative, but most of them were too big or too difficult to use. In 1495, Sforza asked Da Vinci to make a grand painting, which was based on the Last Supper of Jesus, on the wall of a church in Milan. Da Vinci gladly took on the project because he had always been interested in food. He spent a lot of time cooking all kinds of food to decide what to put on the table in his picture. Da Vinci has wasted his time in the kitchen for over a year. That's the reason why he hasn't finished the painting yet, complained the people from the church to Sforza. Although Da Vinci never became a successful cook, he showed great interest in cooking throughout his life. He was not only a great painter, but also a creative cook. Now that you know all about his secret passion for cooking, you will never look at the Last Supper the same way. Lesson 7. Wit and Wisdom. Tales of Birbal. Akbar, the third Mughal emperor, had a number of wise officials at his court. Among them was a man whose name was Raja Birbal. He was famous for his quick wit and was very wise with his words. Thus, the emperor always liked to have Birbal near him. Sweet Punishment. To test his officials' wisdom, Akbar often asked them strange questions. One day, he came up with an interesting question. Someone pulled a hair from my head today. What should I do to him? He should be punished, of course. Yes, punish him. Akbar turned to Birbal. What would you do if you were in my place, Birbal? If I were you, I would give him sweets. What's he talking about? Beerball's crazy. What made you say so? The person who pulled your hair must be your grandson. No one else could do such a thing. You are indeed correct, Beerball. I'm so glad to have someone as wise as you near me. A pot full of wisdom. One day, the king of Persia sent an official with a strange favor. I hear you have a lot of wise men in your country. I've been asked by my king to bring him a pot full of wisdom. That makes no sense. How can we put wisdom in a pot? Can you bring him a pot full of wisdom, Beerball? 
It won't be a problem. Could you please wait a few weeks? Of course. Take as much time as you need. A few weeks later, Birbal came back with two pots whose necks were really narrow. He offered one to the Persian official. You can take this pot of wisdom to your king. Please ask him to return the pot to us after he takes the wisdom out of it. The pot is very precious, so please be careful not to break it. We only have two pots of wisdom. The Persian official looked inside the pot and became speechless. He thanked Birbal and left for his country. It would be great if there were a man as wise as Birbal in our country. After the Persian official left, Akbar asked Birbal what was inside the pot. Here is the other pot. You can see for yourself. Akbar looked inside the other pot and found a pumpkin just as big as the pot. I see. The pumpkin can't be taken out without breaking the pot. How did you do it? I put the pots over pumpkin flowers and waited until the pumpkins grew as big as the pots. Ha ha ha! This certainly is a pot full of wisdom.